this thing moves. But it can really go anywhere. So let's fix that. The idea is to make a crawler that goes under the excavator made out of this. In my thread design, these two go in first and are joined by this, which has the same outer dimensions as a regular two-hole block, but have threaded holes on three sides and rounded corners so it can rotate. Now to join two of these together, I will be using these two whole quarter height blocks that allow for the links to rotate. These screws in here are just a little bit longer, so the white part of the screw reaches the end before entirely catching the block, allowing it to rotate freely without the screws getting loose. I need to add something to this thread so the sprockets can catch onto it and make it move. So I will add one of these on each side on every link. This is now a complete link, we just need to do this again 20 times. And this is one thread complete, and this is the one for the other side. Next, we need the sprocket that will match these threads, so let's get to it! What I call an idler sprocket is complete, but this one doesn't transmit power to the threads. For that, we need to add a gear here, a gear here. We need to add a gear here so we can later connect a servo. And that's almost identical to the process of assembling this one, but just with longer screws and with one of these on each side, we will be able to transmit power to the threads. Now we need to have this at the back and this at the front, one set of these on each side, and we need some sort of frame or chassis to connect everything. So let's do that. And bottom idlers are in. In the last video, I showed you how I added a thread in the back of the screws to be able to join two screws together. And now I will show you what that was for. I added a lot of screws in here and in here that seem to fasten nothing. That they sort of do, because if you try to fasten a screw in the back of one of those screws, you can use that to fasten stuff. So let's keep at what is basically throwing screws at this thing. And on top of the hill, we need now another set of idlers for when the thread goes over it. I 
I need to replicate this on the other side, but I just ran out of screws. So, while I wait for that to finish printing, I'm going to take care of this. I think we all can agree that we will need something fancier than this as a counterweight. So I've used Onshape to design one. Onshape is a professional CAD plus PDM platform for business that is accessible across all platforms because it works in the browser just like Google Docs. So I just had to open the browser and was designing the part right away. It is great to work in teams and to work directly with suppliers or manufacturers as you can now easily collaborate on the same document across the world at the same time because a document will stay updated no matter where it's open or who modifies it. And Onshape includes industry-leading manufacturing-specific features for sheet metal and frame-based design, as well as surfacing configurations, detailed drawings and finite element analysis. And to make it even better, Onshape recently acquired a company called Cloud Milling, which means that professional-grade CAM is coming to Onshape soon as well. I highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching to consider using Onshape for their business. To try it out for free, go to onshape.pro slash Ivan Miranda. And I think now we need to make this heavier. And this is just 3.3 kilos, so more or less one set of these pieces of steel in here are the same as this. I can mount this one hanging from the back. So the lever is longer, more momentum, and the effect is larger, hopefully. And I have another one ready. So we now have counterweights that look way nicer than before. So let's see if it finished printing. And there you go, 64 new screws printed with my own personalized bed adhesion system, where I have these four tabs in here that allow me to support the screws while they are printing, but it is also pretty easy to remove. Sixty four screws ready to go. Let's keep going. And that's one set complete. And here is the other one. I, I didn't think this completely through. <laughs> Not any other thing that I do on this channel. But this is going to be interesting. I don't think that I'm going to be able to lift it when it's finished. I need to remove these long ones in here and then insert these two inside here and fasten it. I think at this point, the smartest thing to do is to remove the arm and the counterweights. Because if not, I don't see how am I going to do it. Much better.
it seems that at some point I took a decision to narrow the frame of each one of the tracks, which now I've realized that it is wrong because there is not enough space for the idlers, so I will have to widen the frames. It will take just a second. It took a while, but it's fixed now, so let's try and install the tracks now. All the parts of the drivetrain are in, so I will throw in some wires and see if I can make it work. I'd say it's finished, but not very confidently because I had to go back and forth with a few bits here and there to just make it get here. But I haven't tried it yet, so let's get it off the table and on the floor somehow, and let's test it. How am I going to get this off the table? The tank ramp. This build is just at the limit of what can be done with these blocks at this size, so it is pretty fragile. Down it is. almost can move, so I changed the gear ratio of the tracks. I added a larger gear in the sprocket and a smaller on the servos, so let's see if this is the one. I keep losing parts. Okay, I'm gonna count this as moving because this thing is super heavy and I'm just using servos. And, well, for smaller things I think it would be great, but I, I as always went too far. This thing weighs a ton. Give me a second. 32.5 kilos. By the way, 90% of those kilos are from Polymakers Polylite PLA. In red, Polymaker is the awesome filament sponsor of this channel. There is a link in the description. Send them some love so I can keep making crazy stuff like this. And last but not least, let's try the arm and the platform. I've added a couple of mechanical end stops on the base because I didn't want to deal with the rotating wire thing. So let's test it out.
And just like that, it explodes because I didn't trim the servos before switching it on. The good thing about this is that just a couple of screws explode and I can just swap them and reset. But I need to trim my channels first. I'm having too much fun with this. I think the Miranda Blocks Mini are tested and ready for the go-kart. If you want to know more about how to get these blocks, there is a link to my website in the description. And I think that's it for this video and this excavator. This was way more fun than I anticipated. Thanks a lot for that to all my Patreons and members. Thank you. And now please go and make something!